Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon Perna, and where I come from, this means grandma's arthritis is flaring up again, and wearing your shirt like this means it's dinner time, and I'm going out for sausage. Today, I am reviewing the Packers-Cowboys game, but first, I want to play this video from my friend and comedian, Samuel J. Comroe, who posted on Instagram. Hey, what's up, people? I just want to apologize this morning. Uh, apparently, I offended some people last night when I was talking shit about the Cowboys because I was super excited about the Packers' victory. And some Cowboy fans, a few of you guys, let me know that you were going to unfollow me. So I want to say I'm sorry. Um, I grew up in a household where talking shit is what you do. It doesn't matter if your team's winning, losing, you talk shit, nothing's off limits. It's all jokes, it's all it's all fun. Kind of like this apology is it's just a big joke because absolutely go fuck yourselves. You guys suck, you lost, then you unfollowed me like a bunch of bitches. And now I'm gonna drink the sweet, sweet tears of the Dallas Cowboy fans. Ooh. Salty. If you're still here after that video, Cowboys fans, I, I know your southern, oversized, cholesterol-ridden hearts are broken, but the future for your team is very bright. Dak Prescott is maybe the best rookie quarterback I've ever watched play, and he helped lead a comeback that nearly won him his first playoff game in his first season. Ezekiel Elliott is a tremendous running back, and he and Dak are not only one of the most talented rookie pairs I've ever seen, they are adorable. Can you imagine if that were Ben Roethlisberger and Le'Veon Bell tickle fighting? Or Tom Brady and Julian Edelman? Uh, I can't imagine that, but Tom Brady and Edelman might actually be fucking before their pregame warm-ups. That's good sports. This episode is sponsored by CW Hemp. Dot com. Get your Charlotte's Web hemp oil with my promo code. That's good for 10% off of your order. If you have anxiety because your football team lost in the playoffs, get your Charlotte's Web hemp oil. If you have anxiety from real problems in the real world, get some Charlotte's Web hemp oil. If you want to make me happy, get some Charlotte's Web hemp oil. The Packers and Cowboys game was by far the most entertaining game of the 2017 playoffs. Both teams played their asses off and both fan bases should be proud of how their guys performed. Dallas was unfortunately tasked with playing against a living football god in Aaron Rodgers. Look at this tweet about him after the game. Randall Cobb said, the final play was not an actual play call. Rodgers just told each receiver what to do, like a kid drawing in the dirt seriously. The Packers started this game in familiar territory by losing a defensive back due to injury. Morgan Burnett and Ladarius Gunter, two teammates, collided. Gunter appeared to be the man hurt on the play, but it was Burnett who didn't return. That play did stop the driving Cowboys, who called in Dan Bailey to blast a 50-yard field goal and go up 3-0. Packers were averaging 35 points per game heading into this playoff battle. Aaron Rodgers wanted to keep that point average on par and started the first possession by threading a needle to Randall Cobb and then saying, the only thing better than threading one needle is to thread two needles. Roger's mom is an avid sewer, in case you were wondering. This is where the ball snuck into Richard Rogers' lap. Sean Lee could literally hear the ball whistle past his ear. I think the ball may have whispered into his ear. Nothing can stop Rogers, you son of a bitch. Well, I don't, I don't know if it, it said the son of a bitch thing. Dallas was flagged for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for Bryce Butler not participating in the huddle. That's right, the Cowboys' drive was murdered by a penalty nobody has ever fucking heard of. That penalty reversed a 22-yard gain by Terrence William, which made it feel like a 37-yard penalty. This was a 15-yard penalty so lame, even Roger Goodell tweeted, Why the fuck is this a rule? So now, we all know you can't send a guy into the huddle and then have him leave the field without participating in the play. Although some would argue that's what the Rams offense did the entire season. But you can't flag 11 guys for showing up in the huddle and then not playing on any snap. Then, the Packers' Ty Montgomery rushed for a touchdown, but the real story on that drive was that lineman TJ Lang left the game for the Packers when his chin strap broke. That's right. 
Aaron Rodgers forgot to even use his chin strap on a play, and the Cowboys defense was checking their jock straps to make sure their balls were still there after the Packers took a 21-3 lead. Things looked bleak in Dallas, the way they do pretty much every day in Texas, but Des Bryant resuscitated a lifeless Cowboys team with a 40-yard touchdown reception right before the half, cutting the Packers' lead 21-10. Dak Prescott was feeling it. And by it, I mean completions. He was six for six, made two nice throws to Cole Beasley to give Dan Bailey a date with the Gooch. Bailey nailed the ball down the Gooch. If you're not familiar with that, it just means a field goal to go into halftime 21-13. Aaron Rodgers started the second half on fire lit or whatever the kids say these days by rolling right, getting hit, and somehow throwing a perfect pass to Randall Cobb on the sideline. The throw he made defies logic. He tossed three to four more balls the Cowboys couldn't defend until he inevitably threw his second touchdown, this time to Jared Cook, who was alone in the corner of the end zone, giving the Packers a 28-13 lead. He's so good, God, Aaron Rodgers is so good. God, it doesn't turn me on or anything. I just like the way he plays football. After that touchdown, I really thought the game was over for the Cowboys when Micah Hyde jumped the quick wide receiver screen and picked off Dak Prescott in the red zone. I have no idea why Dallas tried to throw it on a third and one in that situation. You have Elliott in the backfield and you throw it on third and one? What the hell? That is the easiest call to make in the NFL. The Texans, Cowboys, and Steelers all fucked themselves by trying to throw on third and shorts with great running backs sitting in their fucking backfield. Dallas lucked out because Aaron Rodgers matched Prescott's pick with a rare interception to the candy man, Heath. Speaking of delicious treats, like an overpriced bakery, that turnover was costly. Prescott went six for six for the second time in the game to put Dallas within eight. Ezekiel Elliott embarrassed Clay Matthews with a spin move in the backfield, helping move the Dallas Cowboys back into the red zone. Dak to Dez. Two men with obscure three-letter names hooked up for another touchdown, and Prescott tied the game with a two-point conversion. This left Rodgers with about four minutes to try and retake the lead. That is like giving Michael Floyd a bottle of tequila and asking him to not drive home. He's going to do it every time. Here's what's interesting. The Packers' first game-winning drive was aided by a pass interference call. That's interesting because the refs didn't call two blatant pass interferences early in the game on Dallas. If you're a Cowboys fan, you are pissed. But if you believe in football karma, you believe the missed calls were equalized by the late dicey P.I. call. Mason Crosby then nailed a 56-yard gooch shot that he knuckled through the uprights. I mean, he just fisted that ball down the gooch, setting a Packers postseason record for longest field goal made. But it's not over. Dak wasn't done. He had a minute 30 to work with. His first throw was for a 24-yard completion to Terrence Williams, then 10 more to Jason Witten. And in seconds, the Cowboys were in field goal range. Dan Bailey answered Crosby's kick with a 52-yard gooch stinker of his own to tie the game back up or Dak up, as they say in Dallas, with 37 seconds left on the clock, which is the wrong amount of time to give Aaron Rodgers. You leave him with zero seconds or you die. Roger, the mother of Hail Marys, had two timeouts and 35 seconds after the kickoff in the bank. Could he do it? Well, remember that tweet from the beginning? It was a 35-yard heater from Rodgers to Cook on the sideline that forced both Joe Buck and Troy Aikman to say, unbelievable. That set up Mason Crosby for a 51-yard field goal attempt. And Crosby gets iced. He nails it from 51, but Garrett called the timeout. The kick doesn't count, but... Crosby steps back up and makes it again, just barely a legendary double 51 yard field goal make. The Packers win this game 34-31 in the best playoff game of this season. Crosby makes three 50 plus yard field goals to win the game. Two counted, but he made three. I'm sorry, Dallas. I know how much this meme must sting today, but I have to show it. The internet demands I show it. It also demands I show this one and this one, and this one. Everyone around the country can agree today 
America is a better place. Not because the Cowboys lost, but because Skip Bayless can finally shut the fuck up about the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl this season. Actually, he might still think they have a chance to win it. He might. Jeez, fuck it up, fuck it up! Jeez, miss it! Miss it! Miss it! Where you at that? And finally, today, Mason Crosby and Aaron Rodgers get to share the Big Dick Player Award, the most prestigious award in all of sports. Mason Crosby, enjoy it, because I have a feeling Aaron Rodgers may win it next week, and then again during the Super Bowl. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Make sure you subscribe here. Give me a follow on Twitter, at Brandon Perna, if you want to talk football, if you want to talk shit. It's all welcome. It's all fun. Also, 10% off of your Charlotte's Web Hemp Oil at CWHemp.com with the promo code, that's good.